So today I'm going to continue my adventures into analyzing the effectiveness of using a brass compression fitting to secure a Bowden tube into a hot end. So we're going to go over a brief overview on how these compression fittings work because they're not actually specifically designed for the 3D printing industry. They're used for a lot of uh, pipe fittings and such for the plumbing industry, but they work incredibly well for our purposes here with 3D printing. So first we slide the compression nut over the Bowden tube and then we take this brass compression sleeve and we slide it over the Bowden tube here. And then we slide the Bowden tube onto the mating surface and basically what happens is when you compress that brass sleeve when as you tighten this down it's going to grip on the Bowden tube and that grip is incredibly strong now then getting the right compression fitting is very important as there are dozens of different sizes so I'll put a link to uh, where I got this one on AliExpress now this is one of those super duper cheap micro swiss knockoffs and the reason i'm using this for this explanation is because this has the same threads you would use for a pneumatic coupler now pneumatic couplers don't do very well for the 3d printing applications that they're put into but they use m10 threads which is what this is and because of that we can screw this in place where a pneumatic coupler would go but instead now you have a brass compression fitting but there is some modification that needs to be done here let's take this out and let's talk about the Bowden tube now the Bowden tube doesn't go in any further than this on this particular fitting and the reason why is there's a little tiny lip on the inside we're going to have to drill out. Well, that's not going to be a big issue. This is some relatively soft metal and I've got some titanium drill bits. So we're going to bore this out ever so slightly just to the point where we can slide this Bowden tube through. Because we want this Bowden tube to sit as far down mating with the surface or the hole that the filament is going to go through. So this shouldn't be all that hard. All right, so we're gonna take a drill bit that's just slightly bigger than that little stopping point inside of this compression fitting. You'll notice, put it in here, and we're just slightly bigger. So we're gonna drill this out here, and we're gonna go in the direction of the way the Bowden tube would go down this way. And just like that. Let's see if it's large enough for the Bowden tube to fit through. And we're going to have to go up just a little bigger in size, but we are getting there. All right, just a slightly bigger size. Okay. And we'll see if that's big enough to let the Bowden tube through. There we go. That's easy enough. So, now that the Bowden tube can easily slide through here, you should be able to have everything connect nicely. So we're going to go ahead and slide the components over. So we're going to take the compression nut, slide that over, take the compression ring, slide that over, and we're going to take the M10 threaded 
mating point. Slide everything through. We take that and take a gander. Yep, I would say that is going through as far as it needs to go. I'm going to take our compression nut. And the thing about it is, because these are designed for like copper pipes, and this is PTFE, you don't need to tighten it nearly as much as you would like on a copper pipe. So keep that in mind. But, good lord, that is a tight connection. I'm like, I'm actually, like, I don't know if you can gather how hard I am pulling. Oh, but that is genuinely in there, you know? So, this should very much work. But, just to make sure filament slides up and down through it, we're going to go grab some 1.75 millimeter filament that I got laying around. We're going to make sure it slides through all the way to the bottom. And we're going to go from there. Now, in order to ensure that the filament is definitely going through this entire setup without any problems, we're going to unscrew the brass fitting, and you'll see, just to focus here, you see that the brass fitting definitely allows the tube to go through there. So we're going to take some old filament. Okay, the filament isn't too brittle here because it's just some really old stuff. But I just want to make sure that everything goes through everything here. And what do you know? Take a gander. Whee! It goes through. It's not really adding all much, all that much friction. Now I am using a genuine Capricorn Bowden tube, which I recommend when using these sorts of things because of their relatively consistent outer diameter. Uh, if you go through any other manufacturer, you you can't guarantee consistency between manufacturers, but because the uh, Capricorn is so ubiquitous in the 3D printing industry and their PTFE is genuinely pretty slippery. You shouldn't have any problems with uh, the fittings. So I would say that this is definitely a very very viable solution. So, what is this all leading up to? Because I don't really intend on using this cheapo depot, like 13. Well, no, you can get these on AliExpress for like four bucks. Uh, I don't like these as much as I like the Micro Swiss. Um, my genuine Micro Swiss has served me in good faith. For well over a thousand hours. We're probably coming up on closer to 2,000. And with very, very few issues. The only weak point on a Micro Swiss is the fact that they use a plastic Bowden Collect. Now, um, I'm hoping that I can find a way to get a genuine Micro Swiss heatsink to use these threads. Maybe I'll tap the threads myself or maybe um, maybe there's some other ways to go about this. Uh, I can't discuss that at the moment but um, this is definitely something that uh, we need to all start taking much more seriously in the 3D printer realm. It does not take up more space the necessary. It doesn't overhang on anything. It holds this tube in super well. And I, I know for sure 
uh, that I don't want, that I would use this coupling system over anything else. I use this coupling system on my BMG, my all metal BMG clone that I got from Fisatech, and I can I can tell you from experience with that I have not had a single problem. But you know the beauty about these brass couplers, these these brass compression fittings is, if you have a clog down here and you need to do maintenance where you need to remove this tube. Watch this. If if this acts like my other tubes on the other um, size I have, then maybe you're about to see something wonderful. That brass compression fitting doesn't really damage the Bowden tube even though it holds it together really well. So that means taking apart your hot end for general maintenance purposes is very simple. I'm just going to get the threads in here properly. Perhaps this particular. Oh, Dirt. I accidentally put that on backwards. <laughs> I made a silly, but okay. Put that back on. And then screw it back together, right? Man, it's holding. This type of comp this type of coupler not only holds everything together very, very well, it does very little damage to the Bowden tube, and it also allows you to take it apart without damaging the components. That's incredible, because when it comes to maintenance on a hot end, that is something you will have to do. It's going to happen eventually. I print a lot, and I do maintenance a lot on the printers. This little coupler can save you so much time. Bowden collects are plastic and they break when you take them out of the hole that they go into. Pneumatic couplers have teeth that break when you pull it apart. I don't like that. But this, this right here, this is going to work just fine.